Hello everyone and welcome to the One Stop Co-op Shop. This is Colin and today we are going to do a playthrough of Galaxy Defenders. Now this game was actually given to me by Mike after I did my Cine Tempore playthrough and I said I was trying to find a good sci-fi dungeon crawler. He said, this is it Colin, I'm going to send this to you, you play it and enjoy it. Well, <laughs> I didn't just enjoy it, I decided to actually paint it. So I decided to paint all these minis and uh, do a playthrough for you guys because I think it's a great game. It's fun, it's tactical, it can be challenging sometimes, maybe for not the best reasons like dice, but you know what? I still really enjoy it, and I do feel like the dice gives you that, oh my gosh, I can do it, or oh no, I can't believe that happened. <laughs> uh, so I hope you guys enjoy this playthrough. We're going to do the first mission, and if you guys like it, I'm actually already starting to paint the minis for the second mission as well. I'd like to do at least a couple. So we're going to set this up as if we're playing the campaign. Just like normal, if you want to just start right into the playthrough, check out the next video in this playlist. Otherwise, hang out with me here, and let's set this game up, and we'll set the stage. Our first step will be setting up our agents. I'm playing with three. We have our Hulk, our Sniper, and our Biotech. Let's take a look at each one quickly. Our Hulk here has a total of 12 health. He can only move three with his move action. He is going to be our Alpha agent, so I place this next to him. All of our agents have two weapons. So his main weapon is the MG here, and this one we roll three red dice. We have five ammo, and you'll see how the ammo is used during the playthrough. We have an ability where if we get a lightning bolt, we get plus one hit, and we can also discard ammo to use for area damage, as well as discard ammo to add plus hits. Okay, but remember, or I should tell you, <laughs> if you ever run out of ammo, you you can no longer use that weapon. So you gotta be a little bit careful. He also has his classic over here, two red dice, it's a range of zero, infinite uh, ammo, so you always have this, and if he rolls a lightning bolt, it's minus one defense die. He has a pretty awesome, awesome passive, it says no pain ability. He gets plus one defense when defending against three or more hits, and that's even not including the dice he gets to roll. So in this game, you roll dice, you roll defense dice equal to the amount of hits that are coming in. He would still get to roll, so let's say he's getting hit for three damage. He'd still roll three dice for his defense, but he automatically gets one success. <laughs> kind of cool. We can bring one device per uh, agent. So his device he's going to bring is this killer drone. And what this can do is it can destroy a signal within range three, and you can use this even without line of sight. As we play through the campaign, we'll gain basic and improved tactics. Hopefully you'll see that in this playthrough. I better roll well enough so you can see some of those. Over here we have our sniper. Our sniper only has six health, can move four. His main weapon is the PSGD-1, rolls four red dice at a range of four, but only has three ammo. He can, if he rolls a lightning bolt, he can ignore all jam symbols. What that means is Normally, if you roll a jam symbol, your weapon's jammed and you have to take an action plus either a movement or a combat to be able to unjam it. If he rolls that and he, uh, a lightning bolt and he rolls a jam symbol, doesn't have to worry about it. He does only have three ammo on this, so that's why I'm having him bring some uh, ammo reserves. This will gain him two additional ammo and then all agents in the same area as him will gain one. He also has this Raptor 1 here, which is only two blue dice, range three, infinite armor, uh, infinite ammo, minus one defense if you roll a uh, lightning bolt, and then if it's within range three or less, you get plus one blue hit dice. His passive is you can skip your movement to reroll all failed hit dice. And then I forgot to show you this on the Hulk. The Hulk has very similar defense as Sniper, except for it's not just against um, ranged attacks, it's against all attacks. He gets to roll blue dice for defense, and then each lightning bolt counts as a defense, only against ranged attacks. For uh, our Hulk, he just gets to count each lightning bolt as a defense. Last but not least, we have our Biotech. So our Biotech here is 8 health, can move 4. His main gun is a shotgun, 3 red at a range of 2, 3 ammo, plus 1 hit if he rolls a lightning bolt. And if it's in range 1 or less, it actually deals area damage. I am going to be playing on the easiest mode where there's no friendly fire. We don't have to worry about if we're in close combat, we can't attack range. Uh, I'm gonna, this game's hard enough. I'm just going to play on the easiest mode. Okay? None of that is in play. <laughs> uh, he has a passive ability that when he's healing with any weapon or device, he always gets plus 1 to that heal. He has a nanobot here. He rolls 2 red dice at a range of 1, infinite ammo, and he can heal 1 health per success. So uh, that's just one of the ways that he can heal people. 
He also has the sentry gun. That's what he's going to bring with him. We can drop that down, and here's this mini for that. We can drop this down in a location. First of all, it has Overwatch, which you'll see how that works during the playthrough. Uh, it won't be able to move. It has three health, I believe. Uh, it will have two ammo when we put it out, but it will get to roll three dice, and he can use his actions to actually use that weapon. His armor is pretty terrible. Lightning bolts, though, do allow him to heal. Of course, you see how it just says lightning bolt heal one? If I roll four lightning bolts, I only get to heal one. Unlike the other guys, it says each lightning bolt. That means if I rolled four lightning bolts, I'd get four additional defense. Our first mission is the Close Encounters mission. So you can see here we start with one device per agent. We have no improved or alien weapons. Uh, then let's go ahead and read so we understand what's going on. The agents are sent in the desert to investigate sightings of strange creatures. Once there, the agents are dazzled by strange, unnatural lights that gradually change shape into alien figures previously only seen in sci-fi movies. Alpha Agent to Galaxy Defender HQ. We have a problem. Over. We are receiving the images, Alpha Agent. The Xenos are using teleportation devices. Destroy them at all costs. We are sending you reinforcements. Agents. Your mission is to destroy the teleport points, teleport points, then come back alive over and out. Psh. Here you can see the map setup. So we've got our GDs, our Galaxy Defenders will start in this area. We have the four teleportation areas that we need to destroy. That's what our goal is. We're going to start with a spine critter, a green spine critter, critter and a blue Xenobeta out. Okay, you'll see those out on the board. Uh, that'll also mean we need to have the alien cards with specific agents, and they'll activate them. Uh, and you'll see how that works during the playthrough. We have some signals that need to be out. Actually, there's just two signals. And this tells us how we set up the signal reserve. So we need to have seven alien signals and one civilian signal. I'll shuffle all those up and then place those two out. We also have a weapons drop. If we get there, we can get an improved weapon. It might be good, it might not. It might not be one of the three agents that we're playing, but to get through all of those, that's how we're going to find some of the alien tech. At least that's how I understand it. We also need to have four of these um, destruction tokens because we'll use those when we destroy those teleportations. And you're going to see these are a couple overlays here, and you see how they have a dashed uh, border? That means they block line of sight. In this game, line of sight is super important. That's how aliens make their determination of how they're going to act. Uh, we can obviously only attack when we have line of sight, usually. <laughs> Some devices might change that. Also, these signals will reveal once they're in line of sight. So line of sight is really important in this game. And you're going to see the map is broken out into two different types of uh, areas. You have areas like this, which is a group of eight different individual hexes. And the enemies will move by areas, but we move by hex. So if I've got a movement of three, one, two, three, that's how far I can go. But if an alien moves three, one, two, three, they can move by the actual areas themselves. So you can see up here we have alien cards and miniatures in play. We have a blue Xenobeta and the Spine Critter. The remaining alien cards that I'm going to shuffle together are two green Xenobetas, the other blue Z uh, Xenobeta, one green Spine Critter, and two blue Spine Critters. The Xeno Alpha I'm going to set aside. You can see that, and that will unfortunately come in later in play. <laughs> We have here the Close Encounter deck. That's how we're going to activate the aliens. And they have numbers on top of each of those cards. So it tells you which card to pull and how many of them. And you can see here we're going to shuffle all of these ones together with the number 8 set aside because that's how it will activate the green Xeno Alpha. Finally, we have our event deck. Similar to the Close Encounters deck, they are all lettered instead of numbered, and they're going to tell you, okay, these three need to be shuffled and placed on top of these four, which need to be shuffled and placed on top of these four or five. One, two, three, four, five. Okay. We do have mission special actions. Destroy. To destroy a teleport point, an agent not engaged in combat, so that means you cannot be next to an alien, must be adjacent to the teleportation, and then spend his action. Once done, place a flame token over that teleport location. It will be destroyed in the next strategy phase. Any destroyed TPs must be removed from the map, leaving the flame token. So after, so basically we can destroy it during the hero phase, and then we have to wait until the next strategy phase for it actually to be removed from the board. So it could be burned burning down and aliens could still be coming and being teleported into them. Our objective is the mission ends in the strategy phase of the 11th round. 
If all of the teleportation devices are destroyed, we have a mission accomplished. If at least two of the teleportations are destroyed, then we have a partial success. If half of the agents are dead or less than two of the teleportation stations are destroyed at the end of the mission, then we have failed and we have to redo mission one. So you can see here, it kind of tells you the which ones are your next missions. So this one, if we've partially, uh, uh, partially accomplished it, we go to mission two. If we have fully accomplished it, we'll go to mission two dash three or two or three, I think. We've set up the board. You can see our two signals here and here. We've placed our three GD Galaxy Defenders. And unfortunately, do you see that, uh, that signal? Based on how I see this, line of sight is center to center. Look at that. You can go center to where our sniper is to center of where that um, signal is. That means we're going to immediately have to reveal it. So we'll flip it over. And you can see there it's an alien symbol. Wow, it's pretty tiny on the screen. Here it is. That tells us, yep, that's definitely an alien. So we'll draw the top card of the alien deck. Our alien deck is here. We have our close encounter deck here and our event deck here. So what we get is another blue Xeno beta. <laughs> that's great. Because we already have an agent that's controlling a blue Xeno beta, that is our biotech. Our biotech will also control this blue Xeno beta. If that had been a new type of alien, then we'd have to give it to the one character that has no alien, which is the Hulk. Uh, but right now, because the biotech has the blue Xeno beta, we'll have to put this one out as well. I think we're all ready to go. We have our three agents here, the three aliens here, still one more signal right here. And remember, our goal is to get to all four of those teleportation devices and blow them up. Let's do it. Thank you so much for watching. I'll catch you in the playthrough.